Hello everyone and welcome to Music Theory with Gim. In this installment, we're going to be exploring a brief segment of Edward Grieg's lyric piece, Summer Evening. This is a piece that overall has lots to offer and is harmonically rich. But measures 28 through 31 as well as 51 through 54, they just they just give me every time. The funny thing about it, however, is that it's really a simple segment of music and a style of harmony you hear on numerous occasions, but there's just something magical about these measures. Anyways, let's take a listen to the music and then dive into the analysis. Alright, so we're in the key of D flat major, but it isn't until the final measure of this passage that we actually hear the one chord. This is because the D flat chord we hear initially is D flat 7. With the G flat major appearing on beat 2, we can confidently label D flat 7 as a 5 7 of 4, and G flat major as 4. This is very similar to the opening measures, only they sound D flat major as a triad progressing to D flat major 7. Moving forward, we have the chord that made me fall in love with this piece. It's an F7 chord that has A flat and G flat appearing in the melody, which can be labeled as the sharp 9 and flat 9 extensions, respectively. And it's the sharp 9 being rolled on top of the dominant chord that just really does it for me. Technically, a sharp 9 atop F7 would be G sharp, but here we see that it is written as A flat. This is significant because it brings up a point that, well, a lot of musicians tend to overlook when discussing sharp 9 chords. Typically, we talk about symmetrical diminished scales, the altered scale, or something similar to those. But in a moment, we're going to talk about how a simpler source can be used for these extensions, and it's potentially one you're ignoring despite it being a fundamental topic in music theory. It's another one of those hidden in plain sight kind of secrets. Anyways, before we get into that, let's look at the following chords as we'll blow through them quite quickly. On beats 2 and 3, we have B flat minor 7 and E flat 7. With A flat 7 at 13 appearing in the following measures, we can label B flat minor 7 and E flat 7 as the 2 7 and 5 7 of 5, which of course means that A flat 7 is the 5 7. A flat 7 resolves as expected because, as mentioned before, the last chord is a D flat major, the 1. Alright, so let's look back at that F7. With B minor following, we can label it as a 5-7 of 6. Despite our labeling B flat minor 7 as a 2-7 of 5, it's still sounding as the 6 of the primary tonality, D flat major. It only becomes a 2-7 after the fact due to the E flat 7 and A flat 7 following. Anyways, thinking of F7 as the 5-7 of 6 is important because it's stating we're sourcing F7 from the relative minor of D flat major, B flat minor. However, in order to get a major 5 chord, we have to alter B flat minor's default pitch collection, the natural minor scale, to be either the harmonic or melodic minor scales. As a result, we tend to focus on these two scales whenever we discuss chord scale relationships because that's where we source the 5 chord from. Only these result in dominant 7th chords with either the flat 9 or the 9, neither of them provide the sharp 9. What happens if we overlay the natural minor scale atop the 5 chord? Well, now we have the flat 9 and sharp 9 extensions, and that is what is happening in Grieg's Summer Evening. We get the sharp 9 and flat 9 extensions from hearing A flat and G flat in the melody, but rather than be some sort of symmetrical scale or one that is highly altered, it's simply the natural minor scale being imposed atop a dominant harmony. The beauty of this is that the melody remains very diatonic and unaltered, but the underlying harmony makes it sound rich and lush. Of course, in this case we're technically looking at the example being in the context of the D flat major tonality, which means we would look at the melody as technically being the D flat major scale, especially since the melody is essentially a D flat major triad arpeggiated, but that's beside the point. Anyways, this isn't a technique exclusive to Grieg. It's one used by numerous composers, and honestly it was transcribing video game music on the NES that initially brought to my attention this use of the natural minor scale as a way to get these really hip extensions on the 5 chord without using chromatic resources. I don't recall ever hearing this technique mentioned in university despite all of our years studying chord scale relationships. We were always so focused on the more distant or chromatic relationships. And honestly it's so obvious that I had to laugh aloud when I finally became consciously aware of this correlation. So definitely keep this in mind next time you're thinking about extensions on a 5-7 chord, especially when you're in a minor tonality or resolving to a minor chord and you would like to use that sharp 9 extension. Anyways, this is all I want to talk about in this installment. Like I said earlier, it's a simple progression of harmony, and it's really a series of secondary progressions, but my goodness, it sure is fantastic. So with this analysis we have present, let's take another listen to this excerpt and then conclude the episode.
All right, so should you happen to have any thoughts or questions about this episode, or perhaps have any requests for future explorations of Greek's music, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, thank you for watching another episode of Music Theory with Gim. Mm -hmm.